Are you planning a cruise to Alaska? I've got some tips and advice for you that I think will be very helpful to you. I've been to Alaska twice, once with Disney and once with Princess. I've learned a lot and I have a lot to share to make your cruise that much better. So let's get started. Okay, the first thing I want you to know right off the bat, it's worth it. If you're planning your Alaska cruise, putting together all the things you're going to spend money on, and you're starting to ask yourself, is this worth it? My opinion, yes, absolutely. Alaska is an amazing state, an unusual state, a place that not everybody is going to see in their lifetime. Alaska has a lot to offer, it's beautiful, it's full of wildlife, and if you like cruising, I think Alaska needs to be on your bucket list. So much to see just from the ship. Even if you're not planning elaborate port excursions, you're going to see things you will remember forever. So my number one tip to start things off, it's worth it. My next tip, you're going to want to plan early. Alaska is a very popular cruising destination. It has a limited season. Cruises tend to book up, they fill out fast. If you want to plan an Alaska cruise, there's always a good chance you could grab something just perfectly at the last minute. But in general, you want to plan one year to two years out. Planning this far out also gives you the option of paying it down if that's something you need to do. It gives you plenty of time to secure your spot on a ship and then do your research for port excursions or things you want to do while you're there. It gives you plenty of time to plan. And of course it gives you plenty of time for one of the best parts and that is the anticipation of a fun trip ahead. My next tip involves choosing your cabin. Now there are a lot of people who feel that a balcony room is essential for any cruise, especially Alaska, when you're going to spend so much time looking for wildlife and looking at the passing scenery. I personally don't feel that a balcony is essential to your enjoyment on your Alaska cruise. I have sailed with an interior room and I've also sailed with a balcony. Was a balcony better? Yes. If you can manage a balcony, get one. But if it's a little bit out of your price range and you're wondering, should I go ahead and book this cruise even though I can't afford a balcony room? Yes. If you have the chance to go to Alaska, go. And if that means booking an interior cabin, you're going to be just fine. Here's the thing about balconies in Alaska. They're not always usable 24 seven. On my last cruise, we had so many days of high winds that we couldn't be out on our balcony. We also had several days where it rained off and on and our balcony was not covered. So when it was raining, we were not out there. If a balcony's out of the question, I'm here to say that's okay. Book your cruise anyway. You may be wondering what in the world to pack for Alaska. My number one tip, pack layers. No matter what time of year you're going, it may be unseasonably cold. It may be unseasonably warm. You may find yourself wearing shorts and t-shirts one day, and then the next day you're wearing your waterproof heaviest coat. When you're walking around port, it may start off chilly, but it may get really warm while you're out there. You're gonna want things you can peel off, a coat, a sweater, things like that. You're gonna want a layer in t-shirt, long sleeve shirt, light jacket, sweater, maybe a fleece, maybe a heavy jacket. So bring yourself some options. And don't forget to pack your swimsuit because even though you're going to Alaska, there will be days when maybe you want to get into the hot tubs on board. These are still very popular no matter how cold it is. Your ship might have an indoor swimming pool. You want to give yourself the option of soaking in that hot tub at the end of a long day. So pack that swimsuit and enjoy. Now let's talk about port excursions. Here's the thing about port excursions. They're very expensive. You've probably already figured this out if you're researching Alaska cruises at all. And they go from mildly expensive, like $200 per person, to extremely expensive, $1,000 per person or more, if you're talking about a helicopter ride and dog sledding on a glacier. Port excursions will be expensive in Alaska. You're going to have to budget for that. You're going to want to book these port excursions early as well because they do fill up. 
Now here's my thought on port excursions. If you can manage one or two or more, do it. Port excursions are an amazing way to get out, get away from port, and see some of the wilderness in Alaska. It's a great way to experience things you can only experience in Alaska. Port excursions add so much fun to the cruise, and they provide amazing memories. Some of the most memorable port excursions I've ever done were in Alaska. Now, having said that, if you're planning a trip to Alaska, and these port excursions are really pretty much out of reach for you right now, that's okay. Go anyway. Most of the ports you're in are walkable, and there will be plenty to do right there in port. So if port excursions are out of reach right now, don't despair, don't feel like it's not worth it. If you can go to Alaska, go, and just enjoy the ports and what they have to offer. My next tip about Alaska is be flexible. Go into your cruise with an open mind, prepared to be adaptable, flexible, and ready for sudden changes. In Alaska, weather is unpredictable, and weather decides everything. You may have ports entirely canceled because of fog or bad weather. You may have excursions you were really looking forward to canceled because of fog or bad weather. You might not get as close to a glacier as you like because there's so much ice. You may have port visits shortened over and over due to weather conditions. Don't let this ruin your trip. If your shore excursion's canceled, maybe have a plan B in mind. But the most important thing you can do to enjoy your vacation is to just go into it understanding that weather might cancel some plans, change some plans. Make up your mind ahead of time. It's not gonna bother you. You're gonna be adaptable. You're gonna go with the flow. You're going to make the most out of your trip to Alaska, regardless of what happens with the weather. When you're cruising Alaska, there are gonna be so many opportunities from the ship to spot wildlife. You are often cruising near a shoreline when you're in Alaska, and there's always the possibility of seeing bears or mountain goats. On our first Alaska cruise, somebody spotted a moose. Now, as far as ocean life, very strong likelihood you will spot whales multiple times during your Alaska cruise. Make sure you bring binoculars, something that allows you to look out and get a good look at the amazing wildlife you're going to see. You may not know this, but some fishing excursions can arrange for the salmon that you catch to be sent back to the ship and the ship will prepare it for your dinner. If this sounds exciting to you, this is something you're going to want to check into way ahead of time. Not every cruise line offers this service. Not every fishing expedition offers this service. You can't just grab your salmon from the dock and carry it with you back on ship and hand it to somebody, obviously. So, if that sounds like something you want to do when you book your fishing trip, make sure you do your research ahead of time and see if it's a situation where your fish can be returned to the ship for you and then served up for your dinner. Some of my family members did this on our last Alaska cruise and it was wonderful. It was a very special meal, a very special event, and it was really wonderful. So, if that's something that sounds fun to you, do your research ahead of time and book that fishing excursion early. Another tip for you, when you're in Ketchikan, go visit Jellyfish Donuts and most of all, make sure you do it very, very early. You're gonna to wanna to head straight over to Jellyfish Donuts the minute the ship docks. The line will get very, very long all the way down the sidewalk. Jellyfish Donuts is a very small gourmet donut shop. There's nowhere to eat inside. You're going to get your donuts and take them back to the ship. The donuts are enormous and they come in amazing flavors like unicorn and Oreo and cinnamon toast crunch. It's a fun, unique thing to do while you're in Ketchikan. They also have adorable merchandise. If this sounds fun to you, get up early, get off the ship as soon as possible and head over. They are on Water Street, right across from where many of the ships dock while they are in Ketchikan. 
If you're looking for something very unique to do and you love Alaska wildlife, consider taking a tour to the Crochelle Wildlife Animal Sanctuary. We took this tour in Skagway and it involved taking a ferry over to Haines. So if you're docking in Skagway or Haines, this is something you're going to want to look and see if your ship offers. This is something you do need to book through your ship. This was an amazing tour unlike anything I've ever been on not in the least bit expected or straightforward. A very unique place. Steve Crochelle is a very unique person. This is an amazing opportunity for photos and videos and getting up close to wolves, a bear, small animals, caribou, all kinds of beautiful, beautiful animals are living out their lives here because they cannot survive in the wild. This is a wonderful, unique opportunity, and if you're interested, I highly encourage you to look into this very special tour. I actually have an entire video up on my channel about this tour if you are interested. Okay, this tip is for my solo cruisers. If you're looking at going Alaska solo and you're wondering, is it going to be as much fun by yourself? If you're hesitating at all, if you're wondering if it's a little weird to go all the way to Alaska by yourself, I'm here to tell you, go. Go solo. Don't let being solo slow you down. Get out there, take port excursions, walk around the port, do all the things you would do if you were with other people. Alaska is a lot of fun. You're going to love it. So if you're going solo and you're hesitating at all, I say go. I have a lot of videos on my channel already geared towards the solo traveler, full of advice if you wanna check those out. But I'm here to tell you, you're not gonna be the only solo traveler on board. I can almost guarantee it. There is a whole world of solo cruisers out there. Almost every cruise you go on, you're going to find solo cruisers. It's very much a thing. You'll fit right in, you'll have a wonderful time. Alaska is special. If you wanna go and you're gonna go solo, go. Now this may sound obvious, but this is very important. Fly into your cruise at least the day before, if not two days before. You're flying in and out of Vancouver or Seattle, most likely, maybe San Francisco. The weather there can be unpredictable. You could get fogged in, you could have delays, you could have cancellations. Don't lose your entire Alaska cruise because you tried to cut it down to the wire and avoid staying in a hotel. Make sure you make your plans to come in the night before, if not two nights before, to explore the city that you're staying in. There is so much more to talk about about cruising Alaska. I have a lot of advice I could share, but in the interest of keeping this video relatively short, I'm going to wrap it up here with one last tip. And that tip is bring some seasick medication. Even if you never need it, you cruise all the time and it's just not an issue for you, bring it. Alaska can have rough seas. When you're sailing the inside passage or if you're skirting the inside passage, you may run into some seriously rough water, some long hours and hours of the ship bouncing around. Be prepared. You can always visit the medical center on board for an injection or some seasick pills, but they are not necessarily available 24 seven. When you need medication, you need it. Throw it in your bag, bring it along, be protected. That wraps up all the tips I have for you today about cruising Alaska for the first time. If you're getting ready to cruise Alaska, please leave a comment. Tell us all about it. When are you going? Which cruise line are you taking? What are you most looking forward to? If you've already cruised Alaska and you have some advice for your fellow cruisers, please leave a comment and give us a tip or two. Please consider subscribing. It would really help my channel grow. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day and enjoy your next cruise.